Thank you. I'm, wow, that went fast. <laughs> that wasn't 20 seconds. Uh, Chuck, I'm going to have to read mine because um, I'll go on forever. Chuck Close writes, inspiration is for amateurs. Waiting around, waiting around to be hit in the head by a lightning bolt, you get nothing done. Ideas flow out of the working process. Like Close's work, our project, Cloakwall, evolved from a working process that is slow, incremental, invested in making, and highly collaborative. The Wall is the most recent member in a family of projects that began 10 years ago. The projects are admittedly non-market ready, uh, open-ended, full-scale sketches, really. Um, they have in common a focus on alternative approaches to affordable, sustainable, modular housing construction. Cloakwall just received an Architect uh, Magazine R&D Award for its efforts to conserve energy through new approaches to cooling, heating, powering, insulating, and lighting an inexpensive house. The wall is designed to be assembled quickly by hand using uh, high-strength, low-weight bricks. A quilt-like fabric forms the, forms the interior skin of the wall. This interactive weather seal controls temperature, humidity, weather, light levels, and desired views. Layers of the quilt keep water out, provide insulation, carry utility lines, and acoustically soften the interior. This can all be hung on the, on the exoskeleton um, in, in, in minutes. Um, but rather than focus on the technical characteristics of the project, I want to talk about the collaborative, slow, and messy process that my partner Blair and I go through in developing our solutions. Uh, I, I think this is as interesting as, as the work itself. I hope you will, too. Um, for example, we find much of our inspiration through seemingly unrelated everyday stuff, through making unlikely connections. How can shotgun ammunition inform house paint? Or an air scoop on a muscle car inform an HVAC system? Or an athletic shirt inform a lighting system? We also make, we make everything we design. We prototype it. This step for us is, is ir irreplaceable. Uh, as stated by Close, ideas flow out of the working process. Progress on Cloakwall has happened through getting our hands dirty, through making mistakes, and from learning um, from those mistakes. A quick word on the value of slowness. Michael Beirut writes, from a journalistic, literary, and historical point of view, the New Yorker archive is endlessly fascinating. And from a design point of view, unbelievably boring. Or should I say, unbelievably, wonderfully, perfectly, exquisitely boring. The New Yorker makes a case for slow design, and the case they make is pretty hard to argue with. Cloakwall is, pro is the product of a similarly slow process. Uh, change from one to the next has been evolutionary and incremental. The project is the result of scrutiny over a narrow band of issues, um, construction that is digitally fabricated and passively sustainable. Um, in the Medici effect, Franz Johansson describes the Medici family of bankers from 15th century Florence, Italy, who funded creative activity in a wide range of disciplines known as the Re Renaissance. Universities today have an opportunity to act as modern day Florences, hotbeds for slow, messy, risky work. Um, for true innovation to occur, one must be open to serendipity. This involves dumb luck, but we can improve our chances. These diagrams indicate changing teams of collaborators who have worked with us from project to project as discipline-specific colored circles. Their influence on our work is, is immeasurable. So we've had engineers, um, biologists, many others working with us on these projects. As I mentioned, improbable objects also influence us. Here, a pattern woven into a Nike athletic shirt is driven by performance considerations. In Drift House, a seemingly decorative, uh, which is on the right, a seemingly decorative surface pattern actually dilates and contracts according to air, light, and pr privacy requirements. In another example, muscle cars inform our approach to ventilation. Like the incredible quivering cold, exposed cold air grabber on the 1970 Plymouth Barracuda, Draft House captures air through giant scoops. Later with cloak wall, these are shrunk and proliferated to generate a porous skin. We also studied the product Season Shot. This technology is used in bird hunting to eliminate the use of metal shot. It accomplishes this through a compressed edible matrix that melts when brought up to the temperature necessary to cook a bird. So in summary, you kill and season all in one easy step. <laughs> 
Similar to the useful phase change properties of season shot, the paint on cloak wall shifts its appearance depending on viewing angle. The house surface appears different to the sun during different seasons, dark during winter to heat itself, and light during the summer in order to reflect that heat without any change to the wall at all. It's all dependent on the height of the sun. Clive Thompson writes, neuroscientists have shown that working with your hands exercises different parts of your cerebrum than sitting and cogitating. Ever wonder why Detroit isn't producing 100 mile per gallon cars? One reason might be that engineers there spend all their time tinkering with CAD software. They aren't ripping open cars to see what's possible. When we stop working with our hands, we cease to understand how the world really works. As a discipline, we have lost sight of the value of direct making. For Blair and I, thinking stems from making, but I'm not referring to a nostalgic revival of craftsmanship. <clears throat> Instead, I refer to a broad definition of craft, not just the material joinery, the art of material joinery, but also the crafting of an argument, or the word crafty as in mischievous. I refer to a digital artisanship, one that requires expertise in moving between the digital and uh, the analog with precision. And these, are, these are images of uh, Dave Haltman, who, who was pivotal in helping us with that project. In his, in his film, Rivers and Tides, after an agonizing fourth collapse of, of this stone sculpture, Andy Goldsworthy had this insight. This is the fourth collapse today, and each time I learned a little bit more about the stone. The, the work grew in proportion to my understanding of the stone. I obviously don't understand it well enough yet. <laughs> Cloakwall has had both spectacular failures and tremendous successes. As academics, we are quick to remind our students of the value of failure but we are reluctant to allow ourselves the luxury of failure, oftentimes because of pressures to declare the brilliance of our work. Cloakwall proposes an alternative approach to not only home construction conventions, but also to design process more generally. It advocates slowing down, reveling in the messiness of, real, of the real non-digital world, and most importantly, opening your work to the influence of people who think differently than you. Thanks.